Max the Maker here with another video on working with 3D printed stuff. Today we're going to assemble, clean up and assemble a 3D printed uh, 12500 scale Disco Prize. It's the uh, reimagined uh, Enterprise from Star Trek Discovery. Uh, fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. Uh, got the model from, it's a uh, 3D Max model from Melitus Shipyards on DeviantArt. Uh, downloaded it, rescaled it, ran it through uh, NetFab to give it a little bit bigger shell um, so it would print a little bit nicer. Um, and here we are. So I broke it apart so it would print a little nicer. You can kind of see here. Uh, I did add some uh, boss holes here to drill in and pin with a metal rod, which I have here somewhere. You can see there's some support along the rim here, um, and very little on the bottom of the saucer, a couple in the little detail divots, um, and some on the flats here. There were quite a bit here on the bottom of the neck there, that's just because uh, I had it printing uh, which way this way so I needed to make sure that was supported well so to do this we're going to need some sanding sticks again these are the nail files that I get dirt cheap at Sally Beauty Supply they work just as well much cheaper uh, sandpaper on some sort of sanding block hobby knife pin vise or mini drill and then our pinning rod here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I want to make sure that neck is got all the supports off. There is a very very I don't even know what the scale if it can um, like curvature there. I'm not even going to worry about that if I have to I'll uh, um, put some putty in there or something, but uh, I'm going to take my 220 grit sandpaper and just kind of slowly at first take a look, make sure it's doing what we need it to, and I'll make sure it's perpendicular. So I'm going to have to take this off the camera for a second. You don't want this at an angle any more than you can help. When you work with this resin, you should wear a mask, um, very fine particles, all that sort of thing. Um, I'm not just so I can talk. So that's done. I will clean up those holes here with a drill in a little bit. And I'm going to look around so it looks like most of the uh, supports are about halfway up the rim of the saucer here. So for that I'm going to take my medium grit sanding stick, which has seen some better days, and just very lightly and trying to keep that, match that angle of the, uh, the, the bevel there on the saucer. This stuff does sand pretty quickly, so you're going to want to be aware of that. You're not going to want to take too much off. So again, these sand off pretty quickly. And again, you're going to want to make sure you have a sanding stick or a block because if you're sanding with just sandpaper on your finger, this stuff is soft enough that you're going to gouge it real quick and it's going to be noticeable. I trust my eyes with this. I always run my finger over. Especially once you start getting some scratches in there, it becomes really easy for stuff to hide. So. There's some support nubs on the inside. Oh, maybe not there. I know there were some here on the triangles. Um, there's really no good way to get those out. Um, I had to put them in there just at the angle and as deep as these um, cuts were. I didn't want them to get soft, though. In hindsight, I probably should have. But um, So I just kind of slowly scratch at them with the hobby knife. This stuff is really brittle so it's very easy for it to um, like crack and break almost like 
crystal. So you just very slowly, and along with the mask, you're definitely going to want to wear um, some sort of safety glasses with this because this stuff snaps and breaks real easy. So, so it looks like there's a nub around this. This is my blade catching on it there. Engineering hall. This isn't too bad. I put supports along the, the base there. Um, I'll be drilling a hole because I always forget to do it in the mod in the modeling software for a, a stand there. But uh, you know. Some supports on the bottom of the nacelles and around these little pipes and stuff like that. So, go ahead and use my 220. The other thing is, this is the orientation that I printed at this at. This hard straight strut here got a little wavy. Um, I didn't want to jam pack it full of supports. Um, just felt like adding more work. So I am going to. Nope. So. Better, looks like it. I'm just gonna and at first you're gonna see the little let me see if I can show you over here. Do a quick pass. The uh, let's see the three marks there from the kind of three points there from the supports. So I'm gonna sand just enough to the whole sandpaper kind of gets filled with uh, dust to let me know that I'm, I've am i got a uniform edge. I got take my metal rod here and convert it into metric because I don't know what 0.32 inches is. So we're at 0.6 millimeters. And my awesome little drill set got all shooken apart in the move. So I'm going to have to dig around for point you might be point six. Also point eight. Though honestly if it's a little big, I'm just gonna go with it. Doing this, make sure you only leave a little bit of the drill bit out. That way it doesn't like break and go flying. We're not drilling into two by fours or anything here, so right. so I'm gonna so very slowly again, like I said, this stuff's brittle. So you're gonna wanna just very gently drill in because it can snap and chip. So I'm gonna be real gentle on this back one because there's not a lot of room. And no matter how tempted you are, don't use a Dremel or a power drill. If you're using metal rod like this, definitely use safety glasses when you cut it. Okay. That's not going to cut it. Alright, let's try some actual wire cutters. There we go. And... There it is. 
so I definitely make sure you have safety glasses on for that. So I'm gonna set that in. Let me just see how much. There we go. Either I have more cutting or more going to do. I don't think I can cut much smaller. So more drilling it is. All right. So now everything's drilled out, test fitted, all that good stuff. Um, normally, I would recommend before gluing to kind of score up uh, the mating surfaces here. But super glue, especially this matte resin, super glue sticks pretty well to it. So, and we're not dealing with a whole lot of weight. Um, so. It's up to you if you want to do it or not. Um, I don't really think it's necessary in this case. If it was bigger or if it was, uh, you know, like polylactic acid or ABS or something, I definitely would. But for this, I think we're okay. So I've got my little pins there. Super glue and my tweezers. there's a little deeper on the engineering hole. I'll put them there first. I'm trying not to get my fancy tweezers. I may have some wiggle room in there, which is fine. And I can just put it on the pins without too much worry. And I'll just put some in a line. And you don't want to put so much that when you squeeze them together you get the, the oozing out but I do want to make sure I get some in that hole we drilled. Accelerator standing by and here's hoping nothing is messed up. That's the trickiest part is making sure we're Just cam at an angle is probably not the best way to try to do that. Well, you only live once, right? Well, not perfect. There's a bit of a gap there. Uh, kind of see it, that's fine. Easy enough to fix. Um, it's not like sticking up too much or anything. So we can fix that. I just want to far more worried about the structural integrity of everything. So we'll let the rest of that sit overnight. And the next steps will be, probably should have done that before adding the saucer, but that's all right. Adding a hole for a display stand. That's actually what I normally use this heavier wire for is, or stronger wire for is to to mount them to be displayed and then use paper clips or whatever for pins, but figured I'd give this a whirl since I had a bunch of it. Throw a coat of primer on it and see what needs to be done. The reason I added the saucer before uh, the primer and all that is I'm not going to waste a lot of time if, you know, there's a blemish that can't really be seen once it's put together. I'm not going to waste my time. And I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I knew it wasn't going to be perfect. Well, this is a little worse than I hoped, but that's all right. Um, to clean that gap up there between the um, neck and the engineering hall. So we'll use some perfect plastic putty on that and get that looking, looking pretty good. 
All right, well, that's a quick how-to uh, work with uh, 3D printed resin miniatures and models. Um, all this scales up if, it, if you were doing something a lot bigger. Um, might have used some JB Weld or whatever epoxy that you like to use um, instead of super glue. But for this, the uh, Loctite's more than good enough. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like what I do, please like, su subscribe, uh, hit the notify button, and uh, we'll see you next time.